already with me. I have a fun afternoon planned. Um, we're doing a girls night. Um, it's so funny because we did this whole text exchange of, of planning this afternoon and we kind of went from like, woohoo, jello shots, girls night out to can I wear stretchy pants? Um, are we going to meet like around five? Cause I'm kind of hungry and I want to have dinner with you guys. We're just drinking wine, right? Like the whole jello shot thing was a joke. <laughs> it was like, we're looking so forward to doing this, but we want to pretend we're so hardcore about the whole thing when we're really not. And we're all saying what we kind of really want with a little bit of shame, but everyone's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to get ready with you guys, and this is what we came up with. We used a few new products and the original Naked palette since apparently it died. Um, but if y'all want to see how I got this look, then all you got to do is keep on watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Clearly, I just got out of the shower. I threw on a nightie, and we're going to do this. We're trying a bunch of new products. In fact, I'm already covered in new products. I'm using a new deodorant, which is why there's this weird color on my armpits. I'm taking mental notes of this review of this of this specific product. Uh, I'm also using a new body butter. Already know I don't like it. You guys, the main ingredient is beef tallow. I smell like animal right now. It's gross. Okay. We're gonna try a bunch of new products. Um, the CC Plus oil-free matte from It Cosmetics. The Brow Contour Pro gimmick from Benefit Cosmetics, uh, amongst other things. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna clip my hair back. Don't look at my armpits. At least this deodorant smells good. It's like a charcoal something something, non-toxic something something. Um, you guys, I can't. I have plans tonight and I think I'm going to take a shower. Ugh. I always worry that if I do this, it removes the product and then it doesn't work. Or if it's one of those cases where it absorbs the product and it won't matter. It did say one to two swipes. I'm pretty sure I did two swipes, but maybe I just need to do half a swipe. <laughs> Oi. All right, you guys, uh, primer. Should we use, yeah, that's a good idea. Do you think other people do their get ready with me's like as classy as I'm doing mine right now? Probably not, right? All right, you guys. I just want to thank you guys for your time and lack of judgment. We're going to go in with the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Primer. Look at my hair. Doing it's all sorts of crazy. Um, what was I going to tell you guys? So I have a ladies night tonight. Super excited about that. Um, there's going to be, I think, five or six of us. It's going to be really cool because it's my boyfriend's sister-in-law, a really good friend of his, her really good friend, and then me and Ariana, which is my really good friend. So we're going to get into some shenanigans. I can already see it now. Jello shots, one-way tickets to Mexico. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I need to do some corrector for this happening here. Um, let's see which, I almost reached for my armpit napkins. I need to throw those on the ground so I don't make that mistake. So for corrector, which one should we use? Hmm. Oh, we haven't used this one in a hot minute. Let's try this one. The, um, this isn't even a corrector at this point cause I'm still tan. Uh, Let's use this one. This is Biscuit from NARS. Soft matte, creamy matte. What is it called? Uh, soft matte complete concealer. You know, considering how much I use this concealer, you would think that I would have the name memorized by now. But every time I'm like, the, um, let me get my readers. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I have this inhabitant on my chin that uh, doesn't want to become a blemish. It just wants to look like a bite. And it really, it's just there. And it looks painful and it's not, but it's just, why are we talking about the condition of my skin right now? All right, you guys, so ladies night, we wanna have dinner and we wanna have a few cocktails. Obviously we're gonna lift. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but we still haven't decided where we're going to go. We don't want to do anything bouche-tastic. Obviously, I have nothing to do with that decision. 
<laughs> but it might be a good thing since I smell like bacon. <laughs> um, anyway, so I want to do something fun, but I haven't really decided if, if that's actually what's going to go down. So um, I'm taking a different shade now. This is Ginger to spot conceal that whatever that is. A little bit of my chin. You guys, so do you watch Queen of the South? If you guys don't, I think it's on Netflix now. Um, but I watch it on current time on, I think it's USA. Yesterday was the um, pre-season finale. So the episode before the season finale. Um, it's getting so good. It always does this though, where it's a show about um, a female drug dealer or drug lord at this point. Um, but towards the end of every season, it always gets creepy with like voodoo and like witchcraft stuff. So it freaks me out a little bit, but <sighs> keep coming back, keep coming back. So last get ready with me. We talked about, uh, talking about social issues and politics and stuff like that. Um, on people's social media, whether you're a beauty influencer or whatever. And I like that the message in that video was taken into individual context. Like everyone interpreted my question in a different way and everyone had so many valid opinions to share. It was super cool. No one got into like an argument or like, like I don't know, picking on each other in the comments. It was awesome. I was like, yeah. my pandas are kind of the, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, we're gonna try two shades, uh, neutral, medium, and medium. I think I'm probably neutral medium but I guess we'll see. So this is neutral medium. And then this is just regular medium. Uh, let's do regular medium. I think neutral medium, if it oxidizes, I'll be screwed. So we'll try medium. Um, anyway, yeah, you guys were super cool. So basically my question was, um, you know, do you mind, do you care if people talk about social issues on their social media and how you use social media? Is social media for you a way to relax, a way to meet people? Is it uh, where you go to learn about something or learn about politics or become more informed? And everyone had such a helpful response. I don't know why I'm using so much product, you guys. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it was so cool. It was so eye-opening. But I did want to clarify that I wasn't hinting at, oh, all of a sudden I'm going to start talking about social issues. I would never. You guys know I'm like Switzerland. I don't. Controversial stuff, social issues, politics, I have an opinion and I have very strong opinions about all the topics. But I don't talk about it on something like this because, and I'll tell you why, I started doing YouTube because I enjoyed doing YouTube. YouTube basically saved my life in more ways than one. You know, it helped me find my pretty. It helped me stay awake uh, with my nocturnal baby. Um, it taught me how to, um, you know, contour. It was so cool learning about new products. It gave me an amazing, amazing opportunity to help my family and support my kids. You know, so for me, social media changed my life. Um, but I, I personally, as a viewer and enjoyer and enjoyer, user of social media, I go to social media to decompress, to separate from my day-to-day, -day, everyday life, you know, to just unwind to find out what people are up to, watch Maluma's new music video, whatever. <laughs> All right, so this is definitely full coverage. It's definitely matte. I don't like how my skin looks, but if you guys like matte foundations, you would definitely like it. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely full coverage. It feels comfortable. It's very moisturizing. It doesn't feel drying. So hopefully we'll see if it oxidizes or if it sinks into the fine lines. Um, I've had, I don't know what's going on with my skin, but I feel like as I've gotten older, it's a lot easier to see the texture on my skin. And the more full coverage that I go, the more it emphasizes the texture on my skin or the wrinkles or the lines of expression. Um, so yeah, I prefer to go with a medium to light so that it doesn't emphasize um, the texture of my skin. 
but I don't know. I like it. How does it look? It looks okay, right? All right, so we need concealer. For concealer, let's just use... I've become such a creature of habit. Like, I tried the Born This Way concealer, and I liked it, but I was like, meh, I'm going to go with what I like, what I really like. Wait, is this medium to macadamia? Okay, we'll use these two. So, this is NARS Creamy Radiant in macadamia. It's one of the medium shades. And then, I think we'll do one or two little drops of custard, which is, or rather was, the concealer shade when I wasn't tan. So this is custard. I can't believe this is the color I used to use. I'm like, holy moly, that's light. These both look pretty light, but you guys have to remember I'm using like all that artificial lighting. You guys, I hate, I hate, 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 hate the way I smell right now. You guys know I douse myself in Boom Boom Cream from Sol de Janeiro um, or the pistache, Pistachio Body Butter. Um, this one, this always happens to me when I try to go like the non-toxic green beauty route. <sighs> this is definitely not a vegan product because beef tallow is the number one ingredient. Like the emollient portion of this body butter is beef fat. So um, I full on, you know what I smell like right now? If you guys ever uh, broil a steak, or you quickly sear a steak on the stove like in a cast iron skillet and then you leave the skillet there for a day or two don't lie I know you've done it and then you smell the fat that's in the pan when I was little my mom used to save fat like she would fry eggs and then she'd pour the fat into this little porcelain dish and then she'd use the fat again and she'd pour it back and then she'd use it again and pour it back and that the way that fat smelled that's what I smell like right now <laughs> Okay, so the more I look at my face, um, I don't hate it, actually. It's not sinking into the fine lines or, like, emphasizing blemishes or anything like that on my, on my skin or on my face. So I'm going to set everything with a translucent powder, and I'm going to fill in my brows off camera just so that I don't take up too much of your time. Um, and then we'll come back and do something fun with our eyeshadow. I kind of want to do something colorful. I haven't done something like that in a hot minute. I'm thinking something like bright purple. Is that too much? Maybe? I don't even know what I'm going to wear. Could you imagine I'm like, I'm wearing the total antonym of purple. Okay, I need to think this through better. You guys, I'm the worst. I was totally supposed to use this on camera. <laughs> and I just went in and I used my collab pencil. <laughs> Sorry, maybe at a later date. You guys, honestly, I'm so discouraged with this product because all the reviews that I've seen are like, this did not need to happen. So what I was thinking for eyeshadow, cause, sorry, sorry. The Urban Decay Original Naked Palette died. <laughs> so um, it's like on clearance everywhere now, it's 50% off. Um, you know, it had its funeral, it's it's over, like it's not gonna be around anymore. Y'all, my, mark my words, this is what's gonna happen, is it died so that they could bring it back in a metal tin, right? It's the only one that has the different packaging, it's the only one that's in the brown velvet, it's the only one that hasn't had a makeover or gotten any attention in a really long time. Pretty sure they're gonna bring it back, probably for the holidays, in like fancy new packaging. Because how are you gonna kill off a palette that's the original in a series of like four or five palettes. I get it, the Naked Smoky, no one liked that. It was like, who needs a whole palette of smokiness, you know? But this one, I'm a little offended they killed it off, but I can almost guarantee you can't kill off like the number one player in the whole Naked existence. Like it was the first Naked product ever. You know what they should really bring back is that Roll-On perfume. Oh man. Naked on the on the go? Naked on the go, I think it's called. I'm down to my last little roller ball and it's pretty devastating. Anyway, so what do we think about that? Using the original naked palette um for a fun eye look. This was my very first naked palette. I love you, naked palette. You're so pretty. Um, we could do like a smoky olivey tone maybe i'm trying to like visualize it in my head how i would combine these colors we're going for it okay so 
We are going to take, um, let's take Delium Tool 777 and the first color in the Naked Palette, Virgin. It is not matte and we're going to use that as our brow bone highlight. Now it is um, very pearlescent. So if that's not your style, you'll probably want to do a different color. But I'm actually not going to run this from edge to edge like I normally do. I'm just going to focus it on the highest point of um, my brow. Actually, let me bring this player in. This is the Cocoa Blend palette, uh, just because I have it on hand. Um, and I'll compensate over here. Same on this side. Do you guys hear Wesley? I left him, his sister, and the Topo outside. You guys, it's been like 20 minutes. He is freaking out. He's like, what is this outdoor business? Okay, so let's fix this a little bit. Let me get a little more blendy. I love this brush. How pretty is this brush? It works so well too. It's like the perfect size. Um, they are the Golden Triangle brushes from Delium Tools. Okay, I need to go in with some extra powder because if we're gonna do a smoky eye, <sighs> you guys, if we're going to do a smoky eye, as per usual, all of my eyes, all of my eye looks turn smoky. Okay, so um, let's start off a little gentle. Um, let's use 785 Tapered Blending and the color Naked. I like this tapered brush because it's a little pointy at the end. So for palettes like the Naked palette that have those really narrow... Um, pans like this um, It fits really really well not like my Sigma E40 that's gotten so so chubby which by the way I love um, It gets harder like it's harder to get the product without spilling into the other pans So this is our transition shade I always forget how soft these brushes are they feel so nice There's not a single ounce of prickliness like a lot of MAC brushes, a lot of Coastal Scents brushes, a lot of Sigma brushes have a little bit of a prickliness to them. And if you guys have sensitive skin or really thin um, eyelids, which most of us do, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it can be uncomfortable to use, especially if you're going to go back and forth a lot trying to blend. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, Tapered Blending 783 and the color Buck. That's basically the same shade we just used, except a little bit deeper. And I'm gonna focus that right on the crease. Do you guys wanna, do you guys wanna have some gossip? I feel like I need to get something off my chest. So, especially because of my life growing up. So, I always am very transparent when I tell you guys like, hey, I was bullied in school and kids were mean to me or whatever, but, I never took it personally. Like, I feel like it's probably played the biggest part in helping me become who I am today and being so understanding and forgiving of, of people's mistakes and, you know, um, indiscretions and stuff or judgments. Um, so I think about, you know, all my experiences growing up and, you know, seeing clicks and stuff with, with, um, kids in school and how mean people were if you were poor or how mean people were if you were, uh, I don't know, super tall or you didn't look like everyone else or you didn't dress like everyone else or if you were way too smart or whatever. So it was almost like this, if you aren't part of like the, if you aren't part of of like the the lemmings like everyone looking the same or everyone acting the same or everyone using the same vernacular or like the cool word or whatever um you stood out but for bad reasons instead of good reasons and so it's weird because i remember when i started um watching youtube it was a place for me to go and see someone use like the naked palette or see a comparative review between the Naked and the Naked 2. And, you know, it was very fun and educational and it felt safe. And it was, um, it literally felt like someone sitting in their bathroom on the floor of their bedroom um, doing their makeup with you. 
And as time has transpired or moved on or continued, YouTube has turned into like who's making more money, who's hanging out with who, who got a new like $200,000 car. Um, you know, it is a place for, for business possibilities and it is a place where people's dreams come true, but it's turned into, this is dark horse and I'm gonna apply that to the lid. It feels at times like it's turned into a mean girls club. You know, it feels clicky and it feels like it's not about the makeup anymore. It's not about the sitting on the floor of your bedroom, you know, playing with makeup and giving us your thoughts or opinions on, on something. Before it felt like something that was attainable, like a look, a friendship, advice that was relatable, attainable, like it made sense, right? And now it's like, what's going on? What's going on in this community where everyone's having to issue public apologies and people are fighting over things that don't even matter, you know? Um, you know, who threw who under the bus? Like, I'll never justify um, behavior that, you know, is, is negative in terms of like social impact or social issues. Um, I'll never entertain or tolerate people that are hateful in terms of communities, groups, cultures. Um, but at the end of the day, I feel like we've fallen so far off the path of what this community was all about that it's almost demoralizing. Like, am I even... Am I even sticking to what the beauty community is? Am I even doing what the beauty community has become? So how do I consider myself a part of the beauty community if I'm not, you know, causing drama and I'm not having to publicly apologize for something insensitive that I said, or I'm not talking crap about my fellow beauty influencer? Like, is, is that what I should be doing? Is, is, that, is that the path we're taking? Because that is not what I signed up for and that is not behavior that I encourage, that is not behavior that I support. You know, I love, absolutely love and feel utterly blessed that this community has offered so many opportunities for me and for my family and it's so wonderful, it's such a great feeling. But I think it's also really important to, to remain humble and to remember where you come from and and to remind yourself of how blessed you are and how trivial and, and petty and just ridiculous some of this stuff has become, you know? So why don't we do that? Why don't we open the lines of communication in the comment section below and talk about what you remember about the beauty community and what you miss about it? So I get it, we are where we are, there's nothing we can do about it, there's no sense in adding fuel to the fire and you know, encouraging that kind of behavior by even shedding any light on it. Let's talk about what we miss about the beauty community or what we would like to see out of it. You know, like there's a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of projects coming out, like Emily has that new collection with um, Makeup Revolution. Um, super, super exciting. I'm definitely going to get those two palettes. Um, so let's talk about what we want to see. Do we, do we miss tutorials? Do we miss reviews? Um, what, what is it that, what is it that excited you about the beauty community in the first place? Cause I know from where it was 10 years ago, I think the inception of the whole thing was what, 10, 12 years ago to now. What have we strayed away from that we want to see again? That's kind of what I want to hear from you. Um, I know for sure there are certain channels that I still go to and it's cool to see like the progress. Like uh, Pink So Foxy or uh, Christine was a channel that I watched from very long time ago and seeing her transition from where she was to now being like a vegan lifestyle channel, I still watch her. Am I vegan? No. Would I go vegan? Probably not. Um, but she's just, I watch her because I like her as a human. Um, and so, that to me is probably the biggest compliment you can give a YouTuber is, I don't care what content you produce, I like you and I enjoy your company. And so when I stop enjoying someone's company is when I feel 
that that's a channel that I could no longer be a part of, you know? So it's for me, it's never really been too much about the actual content as much as the content creator. So if, if there's a lot of change there, then, you know, you bow out and you find someone else that you like. But it's really cool to like see people like Emily or Leisha, um, Marlena that are just, they are who they are from the beginning. You know, they're the same people and it's just, I don't know, it's a really, it's it's a pretty feeling. Um, okay, what should we do? What else should we do? I think we should just leave it alone, right? Because it's gonna be one of those things where we're just getting like deeper and deeper. Actually, maybe we could do, let's see, how about, okay, let's take this brush. This is MAC 217 and a little bit of Creep. That's the black color of this palette. Uh, black with like silver glitter, but that doesn't really ever show up. I'm just gonna put that out here. What do you guys think they're doing with the Naked palette? Doesn't that make sense? Like, doesn't it make sense they would bring it back with like metal packaging? It just, it seems too weird to get rid of the number one palette in a series of palettes. I'm a little paranoid. My skepticism is settling in. My, I've been watching too many crime shows. I'm like, hmm, let's become suspicious. Guys, this is turning into a very dramatic smoke yacht. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we're going to take a Sigma E55 and the shade Naked, and we're gonna run that on the lower lash line. I'm getting eyeshadow everywhere. So lower lash line. And then I think we'll do Buck. That was that color we used on the crease too, to just make it a little deeper. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. And then I have this pencil that I think I wanna use. It's um, a L'Oreal Silka Seam Pencil in Green Ivy. It's almost like an olive. It's really pretty, it's metallic. So let's see how that looks. I should have put this on my lid, like a base color. And then I'm gonna take a clean brush and just kind of smudge that out a bit. Same thing on this side. Okay, go back with um, this flat shader brush and either buck or naked and just kind of run that below the pencil so that it looks a little smudgy or blurred out, not so stark. Same on the other side. Okay, I think we're done with the eyes. I'm gonna jump off camera, do my mascara, and then I'll be right back and we'll finish the rest of the look. All right, you guys, I actually did my hair and I finished my lashes. Now we gotta finish our face. So we need to contour a little bit on um, blush, highlight, and then something on our lips. Uh, honestly, I don't know what we're doing. So I curled my hair, but I haven't like brushed it out yet. Um, so it looks extra curly and crunchy, but we still need to zhuzh it out a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is take the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette um, and use several of the products that are in here. So uh, this is my favorite, favorite palette to travel with. It has everything. We'll bronze and contour with this. We'll highlight with this one. And then we'll use the two blushes in the middle for blush. Um, and uh, we should be done with the face. So get in there with whatever you use to bronze or contour. And do what you do, you guys. It's so funny how we find our own way of doing our makeup. You know, like there's the right or wrong way um, if you were to do it based on training or like actual education and makeup, but then you do what feels comfortable to you or what you like, what you like how it looks on your face, you know? I know I do a lot of things that are like not the right way in terms of professional makeup artistry, but I'm okay with that thought. <laughs> I still sleep at night. Um, after all, I mean, what, makeup is for fun. Makeup is to help you feel pretty and, and to relax. I mean, for me, it's a little bit of, um, 
I call it makeup yoga. It helps me relax. It helps me try new products. It's something that I enjoy doing, whether it's right or wrong. I mean, I could be doing a lot of other things that are wrong. Makeup is not one of them, you know? <laughs> Take a little bit more of that and just kind of dust it on top of your forehead. Then we're going to take our blush, and I'm taking the Laura Mercier Cheek Color Brush, the Laura Mercier Cheek Color Brush, um, because it's almost like a paddle, so it really helps me getting into these little smaller palettes. And do uh, you see that? So you kind of start really low where your contour is, sort of, and it really helps you drop the product and blend it out nicely. I know a lot of times, especially if you're new with makeup, you have trouble blending product out. Like you're like, oh my God, you have a big splotch of like a fuchsia or magenta blush and then you freak out. Um, learning certain little shortcuts and tools to use um, was actually something that was really helpful for me. So when I was learning to blend out my eyeshadow, any time that I was going to do um, the outer V color, I would take a pencil brush and I would just kind of drop the color where I wanted it and then I would take a big brush and blend it out. So um, instead of just going in, boom, ham sandwich with like the dark shade, I'd help myself, you know, it was like my little um, hack. I'd take a pencil brush and I'd use the pencil brush in the outer V, drop the darkest color, and then take a giant brush and blend it out. And that way it wasn't like, boom, a big drop of dark color, you know? Then we're gonna take the lighter color, that's that one there. Put that right here. Ooh, speaking of hacks, I should have done my hack because I'm doing like blush murder over here. Oh man, speaking of life hacks, <laughs> take your powder brush and just blend out or dust it lightly over your blush if you've used too much. Story of my life. And it just kind of diffuses the whole look. Um, another brush that you can use is a stippling brush and that just gently kind of blends everything out. Okay, then take a smaller brush and the highlighting shade in here. Put on your nose because that's the number one spot you want to apply highlighter. <laughs> the highest points of your cheekbones. I move it a little forward to my actual cheeks. Then I put it all over my face. All right, so it's time for lip color and I'm between three different shades, so I wanna swatch them for you guys so we can decide. Um, these are the new um, shines from Maybelline. Holy big truck. This one is the shade 60 or Chocolate Lust. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, I like that. This one is Spicy Move. Ooh, I like that one too. That's that one there. And then the last one is this weird little contraption from Urban Decay. They're the Lo-Fi lo Lip Mousses. And this is in the shade um, Fade. And that looks like this. I think we're going to use that one. That's that one there. That's pretty, right? What if we stack? I think we'll layer fade with uh, chocolate. Let's do that. Am I being too extra at this point? Maybe, right? So it comes with an applicator. I don't know how useful it actually is. So we're going to find out together. I think this is a take on like a Korean or K-beauty trend with like that faded um, ombre type lip stain look. This is driving me crazy. I think I'm just gonna use my finger because it feels like a powder, like a moussey, like a moussey powder. I don't know how I feel about it. Honestly, you guys, I'm struggling. This isn't something that I would ever be like, oh yeah, where did I leave my lo-fi lip mousse? Cause I really want to use it like ever. <laughs> 
It's so hard to use. I'm just gonna go in with uh, Chocolate Lust on top of it. Try to erase my crime. Ooh, that feels nice. That feels really nice. That feels like I need every color. It feels so nice. Wow. It's like a magical product. I'm totally gonna be wearing it all over my, my teeth, by the way. But that's really, really awesome. I'm not crazy about the color combo, but the formula is out of this world. All right, you guys, that's it for this Get Ready With Me. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. All of the products that we used will be listed and linked in the description box below, as per huge. Uh, and I think that's it. I love you so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys.